I just spent one hour prepping all of the art I've ever created, ever, just so I could share it here with you. This is my journal from kindergarten, and this is like your most basic drawing of a dog. His name was Spot. Here you have some more beautiful childhood pictures. I was just like a typical child, like every artist is. <laughs> this is a picture of a horse. This is a picture of my favorite book at the time. Here's one of my early landscapes. I wrote this Wednesday, May 5th, 1996. When I grow up, I want to be an artist because I like to color and drew at home. My mom real liked my drawing. <laughs> My mom was always very encouraging to me. I mean, both of my parents were. She would help my brother and me with any school projects that we waited until the last minute to do. Send in love to all the moms out there. Oh, look, it's another thing dedicated to my mom. <gasps> I'm from Chicago. I love the Chicago Bulls. Like I was a diehard Bulls fan growing up. Yeah. This folder contains all of the cartoon characters that I loved at the time. I'm really proud to show this off. I am very proud of younger me. Here we have Garfield and Odie. This was a clock that we had in our living room. This is a shoe. <laughs> now notice it's a New Balance shoe. I loved dragons. I'm still obsessed with dragons today. This one I call Dolly and she's kind of creepy. So we're just gonna move on. I loved Spyro. I loved Spyro so much that I played it in high school. And I'm pretty sure that it was for younger children. And I also wanna mention that Spyro is purple. I wonder if there's a connection there. There might be. Grumpy was always my favorite. This is from high school. We had to create our own product and I created the self-esteem shampoo. You can get yours today for $2.29. $2.29 for self-esteem shampoo and all of your problems will be gone. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we have this amazing horse. It was really good. It was actually so good that my teacher left me a note on the back saying, well done, please mat this, and you can buy board for me for 50 cents. I obviously didn't do that. And <laughs> for every teacher that I had that was not encouraging to me, I had one amazing teacher that just made up for all of them. So this was like a lantern, but it was stippled, so it was made with all of these dots. And then I had the same object, again, shaded. I like it. Every time I look at my high school art, I'm like, dang, I did such a better job than what I gave myself credit for when I was in high school. So dang proud of these blueberries. I was like, these are the most realistic blueberries I have ever drawn with a Prismacolor pencil in my entire life. This one is weird. It's cool, but I don't know if it necessarily captures the shadows and highlights the way that it's supposed to. <laughs> this one. I spent hours on it and I was so proud of these little goats. They just, they speak to me. They make me so happy. I need to stop for a second and tell you that if you are enjoying this video, go ahead and give it a like. I need some water. Water. I'm dying of thirst. Diving back in is the very reason why I don't do watercolor. Look at this. I'm not saying that it's bad. It's a great start. I feel like I had a lot of skills that could have been improved upon had I kept it going. I will say that I'm actually impressed with the size of some of these pieces because this is a really big piece for a high schooler to take on. It was such a big deal. I don't know. I just, I got sick of it. There was just so much watercolor. It was so big. Like, I just, oh, I just wanted to move on with my life, you know? I just wanted to do something else. And I had the same exact feeling when they made us do still lifes because this is one still life. I remember we spent weeks in class working on it. We must have spent like two months on this thing. It got to a point where it was like, oh, I'm just so tired of sketching. I'm so tired of graphite. I always had graphite on my arm from it and I just I wanted to move on with my life so here's another still life 
I was like, let's just never do another pencil sketch again because this thing is monstrous. I really learned a lot of things trying to draw from real life. Now this next one is a self-portrait. I need more water. All I really did was paint myself yellow. I don't know what compelled me. Maybe it was because I was watching a lot of Simpsons at the time and I thought, hey, make yourself yellow. The eyes are weird, the nose is weird, the hair is weird, the eyelashes are weird. This is just someone who's painting what they think they see, but not what they actually see. When you start to notice all the tiny little details, all the crevices in your eye, you notice how your nose has these lines down here and how your lips kind of curl down. And that's when your paintings or even your drawings get a lot better. It's just a closer observation of the subject that you're painting. Now we're entering college and I went to art school. But I majored in graphic design. And they made us do some art projects. There was a lot of drawing from real life and drawing from real life in art school is drawing naked people. Yes. I can't say it on YouTube, but there are so many ways that you do not want to look at the human body. Yes, it was a very good experience. I'm glad I had it. I don't miss any of those sketchbooks. I wouldn't be allowed to show them on YouTube anyway. Moving on, one of the things that we had to do was take a famous painting and replicate it with colored pencils. I think it's pretty good. I think I did a really good job on this but it was another project where I was like, oh, I need to move on with my life. I spent so much time with these colored pencils. I need a different medium to work with. Like, I can't do it. I spent hours on this. We spent weeks in class on this. No wonder I don't like colored pencils. I started to go into illustration. One thing that I really loved to do was create little fictional vector characters. So here you have a snail. Um, various birds. I was just always obsessed with dragons. Then we have a jellyfish lamp. Here's an adorable octopus. This is the cutest little owl I ever made. Here's another one that's really cute. It's a snail with a windmill. And then here is some more digital art. I really dived into the digital world. So looking back at all of this right now, it really reminds me of my art today because I still use a lot of the same colors. Like, look at this one. It's so vibrant. This one was really cool. I tried to create the Chicago skyline using items in my bathroom drawer. This is my dog's paw. He's no longer with us, but his paw will be with me forever. I loved taking pictures of trees and just manipulating them. All right. Okay, I created so much digital art when I was afraid to pick up a paintbrush and create acrylic paintings. I'm gonna put all of those on the screen right now. I think it's really funny that even though I stopped creating art, I still found a way to express myself using a computer to create digital art. Then there was one day, there was new hope I went onto YouTube and I found acrylic pour art. So after I made a bunch of acrylic pour art, I was like, I need to paint. I need to do something with my hands. I started to paint galaxies. And this one isn't too bad. I like it. I was really into creating paintings that had a lot of symbolism in them. This is the cutest little tree I ever painted. I was so proud of myself. I was like, I am painting. I'm painting. This tree looks like a tree. These leaves look like leaves. It's got butterflies in it. I made this eye. So what did I do? I bought a sketchbook that I could paint in. I really started with some basic landscapes with acrylic paint. This one is horrifying. It's supposed to be rain on a window. Yeah. As you can see, I really got into painting and I was really into experimenting and trying new things. And my sketchbook was the perfect place for me to explore that. I always go back to the galaxies because of the digital galaxies that I used to make. The painting that I love the most, I don't have anymore. It's that amazing wave painting that I painted with a paper plate. So I will put that one on the screen 
And then there's the tiger bubble painting, which lives in my cubicle at work now. The other art that I've created, you can just see it on the channel. You can watch some of my other videos. If you've ever gotten really bad advice as an artist, go ahead and watch this video next. I talk about the worst art advice on Reddit. We go through all of it. I'm off the hook. So I'll see you there.